the extinction agenda comics and movies of the 80s 90s and more we'll all link back to the same source it's just like every other fucking link bait story about how china is gonna master what if us I, with their- what if i told you apparently there's possibly some amateur footage of him banging this chick on the batmobile <laughs> I wouldn't believe that either. I mean, I like I'll believe. Okay. I'll believe, I'll believe it when I see it, right? Is there? Is there <laughs> okay, I'll, I'm gonna work on that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're. <laughs> you know, you people can say whatever they. I just, I just don't believe it. I mean, the guy's a professional, like, uh, and and he's he's good, you know, and he's, you know, other people have fallen off the rails for sure, and it's totally possible. But what you just described to me is. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantasy. Uh, anyway, I thought you'd like it. Yeah. Bees coming down from the rumor mill, man. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah. Fucking. Uh, that's. Uh, well, you know what? I kind of hope it's true. It'll be a great movie. It's gonna. Yeah, yeah. It's gonna just. It's gonna be what? Because they can't not put it out, right? Right. Exactly. Like, thought, Twitter's it, not it, wrong usually. Not a lot of the time. I've, that's one thing I've noticed. Uh, yeah, you put a crowd of people together, and they're usually like reasonable. Uh, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. Oh. All right. Well, that, that's your that's your that's your bullshit rumor mill for the day. I took okay, it deep. Well, took it as deep as it could go there. Yeah. No, I appreciate that. That's yeah. uh, well. <laughs> me, that's what we've come to the extinction agenda for. Uh, for uh, up to the minute. Do, 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 Hollywood updates. Um, so, so yeah, welcome to the Extinction Agenda, everyone. Uh, with uh, just James and James this time, and uh, today we're uh, we're doing a little. We're going we're going modern. Something hot off the press. Um, although yeah. it's although it's actually from 2012, uh, like the original originally published 2012, Grand Odalisque, um by uh, Bastien Vives. Uh, Jerome Melo, uh, Mulo, sorry, uh, Florent Rupert. I'm just gonna call him Mulan Rupert from now on. And uh, yeah, published by Fantagraphics, 2020 uh, or 2021. I mean, like, uh, yeah. Anyway, and uh, I saw it in the new releases. I saw that picture. I saw her falling through the skylight or whatever, like the the you know what what looked to be like a. A cat burglar with a rocket launcher falling through a bazooka, a, yeah, 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 uh, into like I don't know, just some sort of courtyard, and I was like, that looks rad, that that looks fucking fun, and I uh, bought it uh, sight unseen, and uh, turned out turned out it was actually from a, a group who did another uh, a big book, uh, Portrait of a Drunk, but they did a different work with um, different collaborator or whatever, and then another another beautiful book from Fantagraphics from last year. Uh, b- big book for them. Anyway, so uh, I, I thrust this book upon you and and said, got to read it. So uh, how would you feel? Well, I loved it. It's awesome. Mm. Um, yeah, uh, first thing was the, I mean, the first, like, notable thing is the, is the arts outstanding. I don't, uh, I can't quite put my finger on it. I don't know how they're, how they're putting this together like in turn like i mean i can see how they're putting it together kind of but i don't know if it's like mm-hmm. a paint if it's painted but it doesn't seem to be like computer coloring it might be you know i don't know no and i i thought about that too because like with this is like a true collaboration between three different artists like a lot of the art um so the Milo and repair guys they work together all the time and bastian vives he's uh he's this whole He's got his own little thing going, and they're kind of hot, hot, cr- you know, creators in uh, in France, and you know, so you don't you don't have your assembly line writer, artist, inker, colorist, all that shit, you know, and so you don't know who's doing what, and you don't quite know what they're using, you know. Th- this I feel it's computer just because some of the gradations, some of the ways they're able to to make it, you know, go from dark to light. At the very least, maybe there's some computer touch-ups, but I, I could totally be wrong about that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it honestly, it looks it looks almost like like watercolored almost to me, but but mm-hmm. I, I like like you said, I couldn't say. I mean, I can see that there's like 
ink and I can see there's like heavy like um well there's it's funny because there's almost like a lack of detail um, mm-hmm. it's um it's almost like a silhouette thing it reminds me of um yeah, it reminds me of this old video game um from the eighties or whatever yeah I'll get back to you on that but um, <laughs> the uh it, yeah like the, there's like a there's just like a little bit of a lack of detail but there's also like sort of like an architectural uh, sort of like like thing like that the the artists like team really like really takes their buildings seriously and their and their landscapes uh, seriously um, yeah and, and that that like filling in that background noise for the for the book you know is 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 a big deal I mean that's part of what what kind of makes you like like really like get involved I find yeah. Yeah, it even opens up like it's it's before you even meet the characters. It's uh, so I guess for anyone who hasn't read this book, because there's going to be lots of people who haven't. Um, uh, this is this this is a story of uh, three or or two sexy lady cat burglars uh, in uh, in Paris, uh, and uh, which sounds really you know fucking uh, lame. It's a heist book, and it's a cool fucking heist book. Um, and, uh, you know, they're out to the, to rob the Musée d'Orsay and later on the Louvre and uh, fucking chaos ensues. And uh, it opens up, you know, typical cat bur- burglar shit, you know, like there you see the skylight and a little you can see that a little uh, pane of glass has been removed and slid to the side. And then you follow down a, a light fixture and down to the to the courtyard full of statues before you even meet the characters and it's just a, it sets you in a naturalistic environment. Like it's not, it's not photorealism or anything, but it, you know, it looks like a place. And then they begin actually, even before then, uh, before you even meet a a figure, it's just, yeah, you just get the sense that you're grounded. You're in a real place. Yeah. Which is like, I don't know. That's, that's cool. That that's just like something, there's something like about the cars and the characters and like even the pace of the action, makes it like feel like more realistic um and and uh yeah their their relationship immediately starts off pretty rocky with the breakup during the getaway yeah <laughs> yeah and i like it this is a funny book uh you know like she's uh carol carol uh the competent um sort of older sister let's say uh they're not actually sisters but she's the she's the sur- surrogate sister the older surrogate sister and, you know, she's doing all the heavy lifting and, and Alex, the younger sister, is on the phone. She just got broke up by uh, by her boyfriend and it's distracted her from the mission. Um, and, uh, yeah, you get to fucking – and then Carol ends up in that fucking fight, smashing that dog against the wall. Oh, Flying just like kicking the shit out of those guys and smashing yeah. the dog. Yeah, that, that was insane. Yeah. And then she gets in the car and, like, she's still talking about her fucking breakup. Yeah, and, and that's brutal. Uh. Yeah, and it's uh, but then, like it also then you and that too is part of like you need you need that right away because because uh, that's how you set up this particular universe and and this dynamic. You know, Al- Alex is really crazy and really sort of selfish, very really very selfish, but not I don't know. And Carol's just extremely competent and increasingly frustrated uh for, for the first half of the book um, yeah and it's also like i guess that's 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 a cool part of the narrative too is that like you initially um you start off and you think oh my god like if she, she takes another job with this fucking idiot um like she's gonna have a hard time <laughs> especially yeah. if the job's gonna be more complicated than the previous job yeah but then uh so you know, we, we don't need to go over the, the whole thing, but the, you know, what changes her mind and, and what I think it's one of the reasons this book, this book has a lot of heart, um, you know, despite its really simple plot and, and really cinematic heist movie cliche aspects is um, that their their gun runner slash potential drug dealer, uh, you know, he gets caught by the cartels and Alex just decides like, spur of the moment you know we're going to mexico and we're going to save that guy and and carol is watching her pack and she's all frustrated and she's just watching her and it's in that moment where she remembers why she and it's just one little scene you just 
there's no words, but you get the impression she remembers why she loves her sister in, in crime. And then, uh, and then it's a little more lighthearted after that. And then you're like, you know, you understand more of the dynamic and, and it just becomes richer all of a sudden. Yeah, it's true. And, and it's, there's, there's like, there's more, um, I don't know. There's just like a nicer, um, uh, like you just, you feel the relationship a bit more. Like you feel like there's like, there's some kind of like passion that the, um, I can't even remember her name. The From redhead. Carol or Alex? Oh, the redhead. Al- uh, well, Alex is the redhead. Yeah, Alex. Sorry. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there's just like something like that, that's where Alex kind of starts to grow on you when she decides mm. she's going to go back and save that guy. And you think and then she just sort of accepts that. Like, yeah, let's do that. You know, and then you yeah. think, oh, maybe, you know, that's just like part of the thrill thing for her. Is that like that? That's that's her friend that like sort of brings like energy to life. Mm-hmm. You know, rather than just being, uh, you know, existing. Yeah, I guess that's true. Yeah, um, I, 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 that's definitely the dynamic. Um, and it's uh, it's what she becomes the motivation for everything that they do. Like if she's if she's robbing the Musée d'Orsay, it's because she thought Alex if Carol's doing that, sorry, she, it's because she thought Alex thought it was a good idea. You know, Carol's not really the boss until she's she's the boss after the decision is made to take action. So so Alex, Alex is the intuition, you know, just like, OK, we're doing that. And then Carol has to figure it out. Right, right, right. And she'll work. Yeah. She'll work. She'll work the angles and she'll get them through to the other side. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, fuck. I love that scene where um, they're. uh you know, and this and this gets to to the the teams, just their pacing. Like they just know how to pace everything perfectly. Like when the girls, when Alex and Sam, the motorcycle girl, are in the pool, and Alex gets out and she pretends to shoot the guys with their fake gun, and then the guy's head fucking explodes. Oh uh, man, yeah, I didn't like that. That's because <laughs> that's from the that's from the losers, man. Oh, I see. That's from uh, that's funny. Yeah, oh, there's oh, oh, even from... even the remake of the movie with a uh, um, oh, what's his name? Chris Evans and uh, uh, oh, Harry see. Dean Morgan. Uh, they do. Uh, they he does one of that where where he does it poof poof, and their sniper pops guys behind him. Right, right. And, that's uh. uh... That's okay. It's okay. It's like yeah. like you say. This is cliche. There's a lot of like action movie knockoff stuff. The 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 crotch rocket. You know the. It's just very like Mission Impossible. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I forgot that the losers got a movie. Sorry, I guess that's why I was I was dumbfounded by what you said. Um, I forgot about that completely. That's uh, that's cool. Good for those guys. I kind of like that book. Anyway, that's a different conversation, but uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, a yeah. fairly competent move, action movie too for the time. Okay, all right, that's good. That that deserves that. Um, yeah, but I guess moving from that, like the the action in this book, fucking rocks. Um, and and I guess it brings me to, you know, what what frequent listeners will will often hear me say is like, why, why am I reading the best action comic that I've read in so long in a Fantagraphics book? You know, like how, how is this happening? Um, and, and why can't, you know, like, I don't, I don't need the, the, the big two guys. I don't need mainstream comics or image comics to, to produce great action books, but I would, it would be, it'd be nice if they did. Uh, and you know, and if they look to to this book as an example of of how to do that, just like picking the right moment in a scene, so you get the maximum like you get everything out of it. Um, uh, I'm just looking at this scene where they're they're scaling up. The, uh, Sam and Alex are scaling up the side of a building, and they've just like tricked this fucking guy to lean over the edge, and they've pulled him, and he's like, oh. Um, and there's no sound. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No, there's no sound. It's just like, but it, it's just a really nice, um, that scene is just, uh, I, I know what the scene you mean, it, but it's mm-hmm. just like it, the physics feel uh, spot on. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> Actually, yeah. it reminds me of that time where uh, um, I can't remember who, if it was Arnold himself that pulled a guy out, out of a perch in the first Predator movie. Oh, uh, shit. Okay. Ren- rendered very much like that scene. <laughs> Always makes me laugh whenever I see it. Uh, yeah. I think he, of course, jams a giant Bowie knife into the guy's chest while he does it. Well, you want to make sure it's done right, right? But yeah, uh, yeah, you got to keep it quiet. They're, they're, uh, they are on a cliff face uh, over some water, so right. I guess they can just let that guy fall down to his uh, Honestly, doom. these guys end up being brutal mercenaries, very similar to the Predator team also, though. Oh, yeah, uh, that's true. <laughs> you know, also, I'm sorry, if you shot giant yeah. tranquilizer darts into people's foreheads, <laughs> they would die. They would all die. <laughs> I was thinking that I was thinking you're, how mean this fucking book is. You're um, a mass murderer. Yeah. Yeah. Why'd you bother getting tranks if it's just these like giant canisters of tranquilizer yeah, but, well, if pumped a, into someone's head? Sorry, but it's a, it's, a, it's a fucking tranquilizer the size of a baby arm that hit me right in the <laughs> eye socket. You're not coming back. I love that guy who's fucking. He's he's asleep on the desk. Oh, and he gets him in the <laughs> brain stem with it. Yeah, <laughs> and then he oh. just slides down. It's four beautiful panels. Um, you know, you, yeah, I just fucking chuckle. She's at just that. like cr- creeping by him, and then the f- yeah. fucking canister hits him in the brain. <laughs> the guy gets it right in the eye while she's chloroforming him too. That's a big yeah. scene. <laughs> that one made me almost fucking laugh. I had to backtrack and re like re go over the action. I love I love Carol's look, the look in her face after she's like, what the fuck. Um, she's like terrified. Yeah, she's uh, yeah, looking yeah. up at the friggin' building, like Jesus, guys. Like, <laughs> and they also, shot what the happened in that? Oh. There was like a scene where someone was like, I think they're having sex in front of a bunch of zoo animals, but I can't remember. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Two page spread. Um, yeah, oh, she, he uh, just says that I love hearing about sex, about sex sexcapades. It's, number one interest in life yeah and then they just cut to that yeah well and then it's, was, o- and then it's uh, over it's just like sort of a flashback but it was funny how yeah. the narrative was done that way yeah yeah they pick interesting moments for two-page spreads um uh usually it's like to introduce like the landscape or something but uh how'd you like the treatment of the mexican cartel in this book very rambo-esque if you ask me Oh, you think the uh, <laughs> the way that they were fucking stupid looking assholes or and just the way that they were like dismissed as like drug running savages? Uh, well, they are, uh, is, uh, they are. They are drug running savages. I mean, like, I mean, yeah, yeah. You know what? Whoa, whoa. Well, this <laughs> is not this is this isn't how you treat this isn't the same at all. Um, cause they're not, they're not treating Mexico, uh, in the same, that's the distinction. Rambo treats Mexico like a bunch of drug dealing savages. Uh, this book deals with drug cartels as drug dealing savages. So, you know, like that's fair. Um, okay. Okay. Bunch of, go- bunch of goons. Uh, so they're, you know, they, uh, they try to infiltrate a bunch of goons. And well, work. they did it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. There was um so okay these are these are art school actually before we get into the art school guy shit well, I fucking love when she rides the motorcycle up the pyramid of the Louvre oh that's uh, awesome that's later so, yeah yeah when Sam goes to save them that's fucking super fucking rad yeah um, yeah the new recruit yeah. <clears throat> yeah anyway the uh so these, uh, you know, the, 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 you know, they're all from art school. They all, you know, kind of have an art school background. And the, um, I just wanted to point this out uh, for anyone thinking about, well, you know, like why it's called the the Grand Odalisque and and why the, uh, you know, like they're it ta- it takes place in a universe where everybody just steals paintings from from major museums, you know, like in heist fashion. It, you know, it's perfectly acceptable. You can hire these women. Um, but anyway, they're they're out to steal uh, a painting. Oh, well, first the first painting they steal is Luncheon on the Grass uh, by Manet. I had to do some digging and figure out what this one was. Um, and it's a, it's a nude. So like basically like they're always contracted to to steal female nudes and highly influential female nudes, um, which are uh, you know, well I don't have to say you know it's all part of the the male gaze. You know it, it, it's something about the art world. 
fascinated with sexy ladies. And so, uh, you know, it, this is this is the artist's kind of, um, I don't know, commenting on that, coming commenting on on the, and and at the same time participating in it, uh, you know, as if to, as if to say, I'm sorry, I know what I'm doing here is is you know typical of Western art, but uh, I like to draw sexy ladies. Well, it's uh, got like there's <laughs> undertones of other things, like it's um. Like all the all the ladies are, are very sexy in this book, and also there are scenes that that like lend to that. Um, yeah. That you're constantly like fascinated by or excited by as you go through the book, and mm-hmm. um, the um, but then there's like there are, the funny thing is that they're all they're all heterosexual, but there's undertones that they have, you know, that they're all they also have their own intimate relationships as well. Um, yeah. That they're like openly bisexual, or and that's not like it, it explicitly stated, but um, it, it, they seem no. to be very loose with their sexuality, which is, you know, also lends to the that being a, you know, yeah, whatever. yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> a no, likable theme through the story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're they're globe trotting, adventurous, sexy, fucking ladies. You know, like they. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just um, – but at the same time, you know, and one of the things you find annoying about Alex but is also super appropriate for her is, like, she's always thinking about men. She's always concerned about them, you know, like it's like she wants to fall in love or she falls into sort of like puppy love with men all the time. Uh, but at the same time, like, she doesn't need any of these fucking men, you know. She just she just kind of falls into these obsessions. And then no, discover- they're – yeah, they're dismissed. Like, yeah. and, and that's a running theme in the story too. The, the, the male, the male, any, any male character is sort of a background character, which is, which is, is cool too. Cause that's what makes them, that's what empowers the, the female leads to be like so strong and competent is that like they're, they're running their show, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also they kick fucking ass. You know, yeah, they uh, kick the shit out of everybody. Actually, the, and and their constant ass kicking and and super competence and proficiency is what makes the the end scene where Alex gets the shit beat out of her so fucking anxious. That's true. Yeah, like I actually, that, I actually yeah. was like, I didn't even, uh, I wasn't even meaning to read the end of the book. I was mm-hmm. just meaning to flip a few pages while I was sitting on the couch a little earlier, and um. I, uh, uh, that scene started happening and I freaked out and read the whole book. <laughs> <laughs> because I was like, oh, fuck. She got hit with the fire extinguisher in the side of the head and I flipped and then I, then I blasted right through the whole end of the book. That was it. Uh, yeah. But she, are they going to save her? Uh, yeah. Like, how's yeah. she going to get out of this one? Cause she was done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then they have to like bust in and get her. And yeah, it turns into kind of a rescue because they never succeed in their mission. They don't succeed in the second mission to to get the Grand Odalisk from uh, from the Louvre. And uh, they just get out with their lives. And and, you know, and this gets back to their um, that's interpretive. I don't think that. Uh, well, they didn't get the painting. I mean, no, I'd, uh, what's oh, man? What's the blonde girl's name? C- Carol. Carol, Carol doesn't get out with her life, man. I didn't interpret it that way. Uh, that's fair. That's totally fair. Um, there is a sequel to this that has already been published in France. Oh, you cheating bastard! <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I haven't read it, um, but even at the end of this, it says the girls will be back in Olympia. Uh, gives it the okay. James Bond treatment. Very uh, but cool. You gotta, very cool. Yeah. Yeah. You got to flip right back to the end, uh, like like right before the credit, the end credits, um, and then it tells you. But anyway, but I just, thought yeah, that I thought that she got did. peppered, and I thought she got peppered by the machine gun a second time, and felt like that was the end. But right. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, Carol, Alex, and Sam will return in Olympia. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so cool. I don't know, I don't know how that goes down, but we're gonna fucking check that out. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Awesome. I like that. Um, I like that. There, there's a theme within. Um, I, I don't want to call it indie comics. Let's call it art, art comics, in, especially in in Europe. Uh, it's it's safe to call it art comics. Like there's always been um, um, a sort of a you know high art sensibility to it, 
I mean, there's, you know, Tati and, uh, uh, or, or Tardy, sorry, and, and a bunch of, you know, like, there's people doing genre work. There's people doing sci-fi. There was people doing crime. There was people doing all sorts of, you know, genre work within uh, uh, European comics. But there's something amongst the, the people who used to be doing art, like with a capital A, or trying to. There's, there's a small subset section of those individuals who... I think it's as a part of a reaction to art comics are making action comics who are making like story, you know, stories like this, um, you know, f- fun because uh, Bastian Vives, he's, he's also got like a manga, like a, like a Dragon Ball Z maybe kind of manga. Um, that's overselling it, uh, you know, but it's, it's combat related with training and that sort of thing. And I, I don't know, I don't know what it means other than they're just like, I guess they're just trying to say that comics can be fun again. <laughs> it's, well, yeah, and I mean, like that's yeah. just it. Like the little, uh, the little theft of uh, whatever you know, however you feel about that, um, of of like little tropes or little little like you know, kind of action ripoffs from different shows or whatever. That's like that's like acceptable. I mean, like, and if you think in think about it in terms of movies, like. It, it's acceptable in Fast and the Furious. It's acceptable in Transformers. It's it's acceptable like across the board in a, in rock movies, whatever. You know, mm-hmm. like it, that that's okay, man. It's okay to have a fun action movie and like borrow ideas or cuts or whatever, and and still tell your own story. And and I mean, like that that that's almost like cool. Uh, it's like sort of a nostalgic throwback sort of technique. You know, I don't know. No, and, and I was I was reading an interview from 2012 uh, from um, not not Vives, but from uh, I put their fucking names away, Rupert and uh, Bolo, and they were uh, at that time they were they were trying to do something more like comic strips, like they're within the indie tradition. Uh, comic strips are huge, you know, like old timey comic strips, like Charlie Brown, Little Orphan Annie. Um, you know, and I'm sure that it's much the same in, uh, in, in France and, and they looked to the techniques of those old comic strip artists when they were creating comics, they were trying to bypass the fucking garbage that came in between. And they were just like, let's get back down to some cartooning. And I wonder if like, maybe that's what this shift is about is that like, they're like, okay, well, we've explored little orphan Annie as much as we're going to explore. Let's start bringing in some movie stuff now. Let's, uh, you know, let's let's start bringing in some manga. Let's start bringing in, um, you know, other bits and, and just uh, open her up more. And I, you know, I don't know. It was just a thought I had earlier today. I don't I don't know if there's anything to it, but. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So I don't know, man. I fucking love this book. It was uh, it was a real treat. I, you know. Yeah, I, I agree. I I just yeah. thought it was fantastic. I the scenes like like I don't know. There's just like certain scenes like their arms dealer like crouched down in the woods with his little briefcase like waving to them and stuff. Like I can I can see that guy in real life. Like, yeah. like you said, like they pick their spots and and the the scenes that they did cut through in this book and so, and some of them are like like memorable like and 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 very like photorealistic in terms of action but then like i was saying with that muted art style and by the by the way if, if anyone cares which probably don't but the game i was thinking of is called the way um mm. it, it it was remastered uh on uh steam and switch it's a it's a 2d science fiction platformer with a little dude that uh, he is a space explorer unable to accept the death of his wife, finding ancient writings on eternal existence during one of the last expeditions. He returns to the site to find a way to bring her back to life, but it's very like muted in detail and people's right. faces are glazed over and it's just sort of a neat 2d experience, but like the way that this art uh, came through too, cause it's, it's a, it's sort of an artistic looking game. Um, it was like a design choice, and this reminds me of that in the way that the how the characters are like detailed but simplistic. Like interesting. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. There you have it. That, yeah. 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 Uh, fuck. Where were? Oh yeah. All right. So so yeah. The I yeah I do love the they love the form 
of characters. You know, like uh, there's the when Alex and Carol are on the beach, they're uh, you know playing tennis or you know whatever that whatever the fuck they were doing, and it's like, and they just know how to slow it down. And there's just like a scene where she's like hitting the paddle, and it's it's you know it's it's trapped and and. I don't know. I get, there's an obvious l- just love of drawing beautiful women in that, um, you know, doing stuff. And not that that's anything like the video game you're describing, but I'm just like, yeah, there's 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 just love a lot of love on the page, um, a lot of interest and passion, and uh, yeah, man. I don't know. What do we uh, what do we want to score this thing? Want to? Oh yeah. Thing? I mean, I'm I'm. Uh... I mean, I'm comfortable right around an eight out of ten for sure. Even maybe more, eight and a half out of ten. Yeah, I wouldn't want to like. Actually, I don't know. I'm. I mean, I don't know how I'm gonna feel. Um, a month from now, two months from now, but right now, like, I'm in love with this comic. I'm gonna give it a five out of five, a ten out of ten, uh, whatever. Yeah, there's uh, a clean. There's just something so clean about it. The the, the panel layout. The the sequential art in conjunction mm. with the writing, it's not too heavy, it's not too light. Um, it's a it's a it's a it's a one of a kind for sure, I think. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's definitely like we we haven't encountered we haven't encountered this before. The uh, yeah, it gives you something to think about too. You know, like like uh, it's interesting that they're that they're stealing nudes, you know, like, and, and it, it's definitely gives, you know, places it in a context and, and makes you want to think about it, you know, and the, and why are they stealing these nudes, you know, for these rich, for, for the art market, uh, it, it, like this book doesn't exist without that, you know, and it's, it's just, in the, you know, it's in the background. You don't, you don't need that shit, but it's there. Also uh, hilarious detail. Yeah. Uh, not, no. you feel free to cut this if you want, but, sure. um, there's this 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 uh, magical moment where uh, Alex squishes Claire's boobs together and just buries her face in the boobs. <laughs> this is uh, yeah. clearly what the audience uh, wants to do for the whole book, if you're me. And then <laughs> this is also displayed on page 69. Not sure if you noticed that. Oh, Very funny. Wow. Uh, not sure if deliberate. Buy that but... for a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Gay. She's from me. <laughs> well, hey, can I have you both? Uh, sure. <laughs> We've had our shot. <laughs> 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 